Let's go. Okay, we're back okay. again. We're back again. Oh, we're back uh, again. Okay. We're good. We're going. We're, we're already good. Immediately going. starting off from the last episode. If you don't know what's yes. happening, look at the last episode because he probably released them like three weeks apart because he's a lazy fuck. Yeah, I haven't released. <laughs> my, the last Gungeon episode was like two weeks ago because I've just got distracted and done other things. But this is why I want to backlog. So. I was reading the um the script for the Willy Wonka experience, which by the time you're probably seeing this is like months old and no one cares anymore because uh, <laughs> yeah, Turtle is, that is, true. is slow that as is fuck. True. But it's very funny because the script is all AI generated and we were just reading the part where the AI rambles about fucking beans that make you <laughs> sexy and beans that it's, like taste like grandpa's boogers. It, it's got this weird concoction between like the Harry Potter jelly beans and then Willy Wonka and it's kind of it's got confused. It's got this unknown character that seems kind of like Voldemort. <laughs> yeah, and he, he like is supposed to talk smoothly. Maybe maybe that's what it is. Maybe uh, <laughs> Willie McDuff ate the spicy bean and it attracted the unknown. <laughs> the unknown just wants him. Oh, it's 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 a wild um, ride. It's. <laughs> I ah uh, okay so. I was just about to start on the final showdown between Willy versus the Unknown. Oh my. The final showdown. Yes. <gasps> Scene. The excitement within the Imagination Lab reaches a crescendo as the guests gather around for an unprecedented spectacle. The lights dim, and a spotlight illuminates Willy McDuff, standing at one end of the Good room holding the last... Death. <laughs> the last anti-graffiti gobstopper in his hand. <laughs> Opposite him, shrouded in darkness, emerges the unknown, with a device that emits a sinister glow. The air crackles with anticipation. Willie McDuff, parentheses, holding up the gobstopper. Behold, the culmination of imagination and ingenuity, the anti-graffiti gobstopper. A sweet so powerful it can make any room sparkle without lifting a finger. But it seems our friend, the unknown, would rather use it for less tidy purposes. <laughs> the the dialogue's so broken. Uh. Parentheses, sneering. That's right, Macduff. Imagine <laughs> the chaos, the absolute power of turning tidiness into turmoil. Hand it over and I might consider sparing your precious lab parentheses the audience gasps tension mounting as the two adversaries stand ready <laughs> all i can imagine is them just like fucking kissing <laughs> <laughs> yeah just mounting sexual the only, tension yeah the only tension that's mounting is between is between willie mcduff and the unknown they don't yeah. call him willie for nothing <laughs> willie mcduff parentheses resolute in the spirit of imagination and the pursuit of joy, I cannot let that happen. If it's a showdown you want, it's a showdown you'll get. And this is my favorite part of the script, because it just completely emphasizes how little the AI understands about putting on a show. <laughs> Suddenly, the room transforms into a battlefield of lights <laughs> and lasers. Willie uses a device resembling a futuristic remote, activating traps and illusions around the lab to thwart the unknown's advances. Fucking hell. <laughs> So he just suddenly turns the whole set into laser tag. <laughs> the unknown. Parentheses dodging a beam of light. You think these parlor <laughs> tricks will stop me? I've come too far to be foiled now. He retaliates with his own device, shooting beams of light towards Willy, who skillfully evades them, using the lab's inventions as shields and counters. So they're just trying to kill each other in front of children yeah. with laser weapons. Someone should someone should put the unknown's laser box in dungeon. Oh, it's like a choice of stuff. Yeah. Not bad. It's pretty neat. Pretty neat. I still really, uh, you know, I stand by what I said. Someone should put the unknown's laser laser <laughs> shooting weapon in Gungeon. Yeah. That's what everyone needs. Yeah, I want to be we, able to we, fucking we, we need the We need the um, anti-graffiti gobstopper in here, too, if we don't have anything. True. Just clears all the debris objects. <laughs> It's Willie like McDuff, a... parentheses. Oh no, he's doing it again. Willie McDuff, parentheses, with a twinkle in his eye. Oh no. <laughs> it's not about stopping you with tricks, but with creativity. For every dark intention, there's the light of innovation ready to shine through. 
parentheses, Lily activates a machine that releases a dazzling display of holographic images, momentarily disorienting the unknown. Seizing the opportunity, Lily sets the anti-graffiti gobstopper into a contraption that amplifies its cleanup capabilities, sending a wave of sparkling cleanliness towards the unknown, neutralizing his device and rendering him harmless. Holy shit, he's done it. <laughs> the unknown, parentheses, stumbling, caught in the sparkling wave. No, my plans thwarted by tidiness. <laughs> parentheses, the guests cheer as the unknown is gently swept up by a robotic vacuum, humorously ending the confrontation. <laughs> he fucking crumples. Oh like my the God. wicked witch, she's like, I'm melting! And I'm then he gets melting. fucking swept up by a Roomba. <laughs> I just... My, my my curiosity is like... With with the way that this was like sort of advertised and planned, was this a show that they were meant to put on like multiple times a day for weeks? <laughs> yes. God damn. After the first time they tried to follow the script, they were told to just throw it away. God damn. Willie Macduff, parentheses, addressing the audience. And so, my friends, we see that even in the face of darkness, the light of imagination, joy, and a bit of clever cleaning can prevail. Let us remember, the greatest adventures and the most enduring victories are those we achieve together. Parentheses, oh, the room so lights awesome. up, returning to its vibrant state as Willie offers a bow. The anti-graffiti gobstopper safely in hand. The guests erupt into applause, celebrating oh, the triumph of creativity <laughs> and courage over chaos. Scene ends with Willie Macduff and the guests reveling in the success of their imaginative endeavor, reinforcing the power of unity and the endless possibilities that lie within the realms of imagination and innovation. And that's the end of the script. That was quite short, to be fair. I, I did skip plenty of stuff. Uh, I, I skipped some of the more boring scenes, like the yeah, most yeah. of the fucking Twilight Tunnel. <laughs> I just read but the even best still. bits. Oh, that's but, hilarious. Yeah, I... Man, did you have any idea it was that bad? I knew it was AI generated and I'd heard a few of those snippets, but I, I did not know it was that bad. You didn't know about Willie McDuff's foot fetish? I, I didn't know the foot fetish stuff. I didn't know his name was Willie McDuff either. You didn't know that they, they didn't name him Willie Wonka? He was yeah. Willie McDuff? That's why it's Willie's chocolate experience. Because <laughs> it's not Willie Wonka, it's, it's Willie McDuff. Well, how would they get Idiot. away with Willy Wonka, to be fair? They wouldn't be able to get away with it. Yeah, they're not getting away with Willy McDuff, either. <laughs> that is true. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so that was... that was incredible. That, yeah, that is... that's beautiful. Ah, oh, well, I don't care about that. A full heart container to trade to cleanse a level of curse. But I like my levels of curse. Although, also, can I say, this yo-yo is ridiculously good. <laughs> I mean, you also have two dudes air striking every room, so yeah, that's nice. Did you make this yo-yo? No, I think I think this is Ski who made this. It's very very strong. But I mean, that's that's good. That's a good oh, yeah. item. Oh, this is prime gun fairy material. Latasha. Yep, there you go, <laughs> gun fairy. I was like, there'll be one did eventually. You just, did you just do that to prove a point? Just I did. Like, I did. Like, wow, you you proved me so right by taking unnecessary damage. You know me. What the fuck is that? Oh, maybe it uh, oh. might make um. Go, oh, yeah, make a, shadow clones. Creates a clone when you slide at a table. That's pretty cool. Oh, when oh. you slide? Yeah. Wait, was it when I slide? What the fuck? Maybe it has a cooldown. It was definitely when I slid. There you go. I slid and then creates one look. Right. That's a weird way of it activating, but I, I appreciate the ingenuity. That's cool. I like it. I like so it So anyways, you said you were planning on going to Venice. I am. Venezuela. No, just joking. Just Venice. Ah, which one's mine? <laughs> ah. Your ones are the fat ones. As it should be. Yeah, I'm go going going to Venice on Monday. Must be I nice to just be able to go to Venice on Monday. Quite excited. I mean, we've had it booked for a long time. It's not like we're just deciding must, to go on Monday. But must be nice to not 
it must be nice to have to cross the fucking Pacific Ocean to go to Venice. Well, man. it is it is quite nice, yeah, to be able to take a... I think it'll be like a two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour flight to go to Venice. It's rather nice. A lot more convenient. Um, yeah. You fucking, you fucking Euros don't know how good you have it. Yeah, but you live in somewhere that people want to holiday to all the time. So. Yeah, but like... I can't go to Venice and like push people out of a boat. <laughs> Get on a gondola and just fucking push the monster right off of it. Yeah. That's like half the point of going to Venice. <laughs> it's the only thing to do. I'm quite excited for it. Um, and we've we've booked um, our, our actual anniversary. So we're going on the 11th. Our actual anniversary from the 12th. And we've booked like a five-star Michelin restaurant place. I'm quite excited for that too. Ooh, nice. It's uh, it's like it's it's like part of a hotel, but it's like one of the most popular hotels in in Venice. Um, Please and... schedule this before you go, so that if you drown, this like video stands as a tragic monument to your passing. It it it, it will be. Don't worry, it will be. This this will be scheduled. I'll, I'll be scheduling videos for the entire week I'm away, so people won't even know if I die. True. If if I don't upload for any more than two days, you can safely assume I've died. That's the yeah. easiest way to know. One day is probably I just forgot. Two days, something's wrong. I think I was going to say, like, one day, it's inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> one day, I will die, and the only way you will know is because I stopped uploading Gungeon. <laughs> no, it's, it's, no, no, no. Gungeon videos is different. When I stop uploading Isaac videos, then you really know something's wrong. Yeah, either I've died or Isaac has. Yeah. You hear that? He's only in it for the money. He doesn't even like Isaac. He's I'm liking Isaac less and less recently, I'll be honest. <laughs> I, I don't I don't dislike Isaac, but I've played a lot of Isaac. Uh, the, 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 main, passion. the main thing that's keeping me going at the minute is the uh, the, the win streak. The win streak's a lot of fun. Um, but like I di I I have like another series where I do like a the new save file, and my 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 passion for doing the new save file has just basically died. I just can't be arsed with that anymore. Yeah. I'm much, I'm much better doing streaks. I cannot imagine it's fun to start a new save file on a YouTube series for the third time. Yeah, it's it's, it's definitely I, lost its it's lost its spark. I I always was confused when like every every now and again you would start and be like, "Are we starting a new save file?" It's like why the the why main would you fucking so, do that. The the main reason I did it, uh, like for Gungeon or for Isaac, is when I get an influx of new viewers, um, people that are, either don't know Isaac or don't know it very well. It's better to start a new save file. Why would you? Um, why would you risk yourself by going against the the spinny bars? Ooh. Take that. Why not? Um. It's, it, yeah, it, it's normally sort of because, like, yeah, if, if I get, like, an influx of new viewers, oh, this blasting cap is very good with these fellas. I didn't think about that. Um, yeah. Good synergy. Good synergy. Um, yeah, if I get, like, a bunch of new viewers, I don't want to, like, be, like, all the way into, like, a modded save file with all the items unlocked and then be confused as shit as to what go what's going on. If I start a new save file, it allows people to sort of get on board a bit easier, and it's, it's nicer for people that are new to the channel and new to the game. But it sounds like torture. <laughs> it is a bit. It's like, oh, well, guys, looks like we have to fucking unlock the lost again. Really hoping for that trinket that drop, boy. guys. Really hoping. It's the worst sprite you've ever made. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's getting fixed <laughs> next update. Ooh. Infraredia a Gornstone. Infraredia. I don't remember what it does. I think it makes the beam stronger. It seems like it, it kills them pretty quick It makes quick it then. slower as well, so that so it can, can if you position easier. it. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Very, very nice. But yeah, like, putting yourself through Isaac unlocks, like, more than twice. Dude. It's the challenges that I hate. Challenges and greed mode. Oh god. Just disgusting. But ironically, like, those are actually some of the more interesting things to watch on YouTube. 
Apparently not. Wait, if I, when, when I make challenge videos, they get ridiculously low views. Every time. Don't Ch challenge don't tell video. them it's a challenge video. <laughs> don't tell them. And only do the replay the good challenges like Pika. To be fair, I and, I, I uh, did I did do a lot I did do a lot this. of the boring challenges off camera because they're just not fun. Play the play the good challenges, right? The ones that like like I don't know, like do a video on cantrip. That's fun. That's a fun one. A weird cantrip one. Cantrip is good. And just don't it's, tell anyone that it's a it's a challenge it, video. Which, which one's cantrip again? Is cantrip the them. ones where you get the like single use items? Yes. Yeah, I, I think I have the world record for the fastest win in cantrips. Why? Why is that something you have? Because I do. Um, Jesus, basically, be BD1P uh, made a video like trying to get the world record in cantrips. Obviously, it's not a recorded record, so he was like, well, I've got it at, at this speed. And so I was like, I can fucking beat that. Basically, there's, there's a glitch where I think it's if you start with glowing hourglass or something like that, you can get like items that last for the whole run, um, and you can bug it. Um, so if you get good items on the first floor, you can keep them for the entire run. And I got like Mum's knife really early on, so I, I managed to do the whole thing in like I think it was like three or four minutes. Nice. Oh, one of the other startlingly beautiful, gorgeous women is DMing me. Just a second. What are they saying? Um, the uh, I I don't know. It's like cat people talk. A lot. Anyways, how goes your D and D recently? Uh, we've had to cancel a couple sessions because of just health issues, but the oh, next yeah. one looks to be uh, on. Yeah, we're. I don't. I don't know the name of the campaign. Because it's not it's not like custom to the uh, the GM where it's a pre done campaign, but it's also not like official. It's slightly hard to yeah. dragons. It's it, it's like a um, it's a third party campaign book that he has. Like ah, it's not right, made yeah. by the Dungeons and Dragons people, but he didn't make it either. So yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like made by some obscure guy who just made up a bunch of weird shit, and it's actually really fun so far. Nice. I'm gonna say we've got our next session on the 23rd, I think, and we're doing a. We, we, we've always done sessions where, like, we do it on Friday, like, gone. after work. I didn't even think about that, just left it on its own, I don't know why. Um, Poor Banan. Hey, you. Um, but uh, this time on the 23rd, we're doing an entire day of DD. We're just gonna play, the, play all day. Damn. Good luck. I keep getting us into really well. I say getting us into really bad situations. I keep getting myself into really bad situations in the uh, sessions we've been playing so far. Cause um, I keep I keep like going off and doing stuff on my own, and the moment that I do, shit just fucking starts, and I'm nowhere to be found, and they have no way of contacting me yet. Cause we haven't found a sending stone or anything. True. I'm uh, I'm the the party wizard, and like. When you see a bunch of enemies clustered together in like a small confined space, right? Yeah. I didn't ask, I did not ask for the barbarian's opinion when I said I cast fireball. <laughs> <laughs> I do not care that you are right next to the enemies. You have the hit points, my dude. You're taking it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you, I... <laughs> They convinced me not to though, because the druid was like, "But I summoned like fifteen panthers. Please don't, please don't cook my panthers." <laughs> and the druid gave me like a death glare, and I'm like, "What, what level are you guys in your campaign now, then?" Uh, around level five. Okay, you're pretty pretty far ahead of us. I think we're only just level three. Yeah. GM does milestone leveling, so he throws yeah, that's, weird shit at us all the time. That's what we do as well. Might we do milestone leveling as well? We just, uh, we've only had like four sessions so far. Five, right, five, yeah. five sessions? Four or five sessions? I can't remember how many it is now. So currently I am... Oh, the Weird Star. That's an interesting gun. I, I think I remember how it works. I, sh I made it. I should remember how it works, but I, I only think I remember how it works. Um, but... So we're, we're up against these, these brain enemies. At the moment, and we have yet to like kill them, but I'm I really want to try and like they're brains, right? Yeah. I want to try and like tame one and start a brain collection. <laughs> have a look at as as brain I, pets. As I told the GM, I already have two brains, and I'm gonna add to that collection. Is one of them yours? Yeah, one of them's in his one of them's in my character's skull. The other one is uh, a brain that he found and kept. 
<laughs> Fair. You just want to keep collecting them. Yeah, I kind of want to collect brains and see how well that goes for me. <laughs> that could be an interesting way of going about it. I also have an angry, like, extra planar worm in a jar that I've, like, forgotten about. <laughs> He's just there stewing. Getting more and more furious. Yeah. We, um, we were being attacked by worms, so I, I caught one of them with Mage Hand and shoved it in a bottle. And we wanted to see if the, the druid could talk to it. And the GM just outright said that the, the, he, he, the GM does amazing voices for everything. Yeah. Uh, so much so that the, the druid, like, talks to animals just to hear... Just to hear what he GM says, his, yeah. Just to hear him do his fish voice again. <laughs> um, but the GM uh, was like, uh, you, you cast Speak With Animals, and all you hear from the bottle is, Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, kill, kill, murder, death, kill, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> And the worm just completely ignored any attempts at communication and just kept saying, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. So it's just, you've not been able to get anything from it, but you still have it in a jar just in case. Yeah. Yeah, but just can, in can, case. Can't you, you, like, all can't you like charm it or something? Oh, I don't, I, well, I mean, I don't have the riz. I don't have enough riz to riz up a worm. <laughs> I don't think anyone in the party has very high charisma. <laughs> oh, I, I have, I have 19 charisma in our campaign, so... <laughs> Oh, oh no, the Warlock probably does, because... Yeah, I'm, I'm, wa I'm a Warlock as well, yeah. I've got 19, so I just I just do all the talking. Yeah, Warlock has a fucking cube that lets them, like, double cast uh, Eldritch Blast, so they're basically... Yeah, at the level 5 you get that, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, no, they, they can double cast Eldritch Blast, and they found... They found uh, an artifact that lets them, like, duplicate a cantrip or something. So they can oh, quadruple shit. cast Eldritch Blast. God damn. That's insane. And it's absolutely fucking nutballs. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've only had, like, one instance of combat so far. We've been doing a lot more, like, investigation and, like, diplomatic stuff to start with. Uh, but I'm thinking next session will be a lot more combat. Because we, we ended off the last session in a pretty rocky place. Yeah, how many innocent people have you killed? Um... I don't think any yet myself. I mean, listen, my listen, and not many. I think our total is like so. Sorry, there were thirteen. Oh God, we there's killed, thirteen. Like, four of them. We know. Okay, okay, okay. That not like nine of them are still alive, just traumatized. We killed like four of them. One of them was squished into paste by the barbarian. And one of them wasn't. No, there was another one who wasn't innocent, but like she'd so proven we'd guilty. Beaten her and she'd surrendered. Oh no, we, we we've I, I've de I've definitely killed someone like that. That they were trying to they were trying to escape after the battle had sort of come to an end, and I was like, no, no, no. No, this, um, they weren't trying to escape. They were like, I surrender. Please don't take my life. I'll give you anything I have. Just please leave me alive. And uh, the barbarian him. ripped the barbarian ripped her head off. Yeah, and one of my favorite things that we've been doing is like, obviously on like a... <laughs> Actually, no, no, he didn't rip her head off, sorry. He he tried to rip her head off, failed his strength roll. So, so <laughs> we, uh, we described, the GM described how he like, sort of pathetically, limply tried to pull her head off. And like, it was very confusing and awkward for him. Um, <laughs> uh, so instead he just, uh, he just hit her with his maul. <laughs> Fair enough. I gotta say like, when, when we roll like a, a nat 20 or, um... If we if we like get an interesting kill, we're allowed to sort of like describe how we did it. Um, and I got one in our first bit of combat where um, somebody I was like within melee range of me. So um, as as he went to strike, I grabbed his arm, pr pushed his elbow against I his grabbed chest. His and ass. <laughs> I grabbed his arm, pushed his elbow against his chest, and then Eldritch blasted it into his hand to use his own um, his own arm burn as like a missile and shot it through him. That's fucking vile. Yep, it was brutal. And it it did actually cause some issues because, like, we did it in, like, the town centre because these people were trying to rob a bank and quite a lot of people saw me do it and, like, now there's, like, multiple people in the city that if I go to them, they're like, fucking, you, go away, you're disgusting. <laughs> our, um, our fighter got a nat 20 to kick a guy in the nuts. 
<laughs> nice. So, yeah, basically the GM had to describe how his balls popped. <laughs> Amazing. That was fun. Good old ball, ball just, popping I've, fun. I've been calling him Nard Knocker ever since. <laughs> also, I'm, my... I'm the one who always like points out something that the GM forgot that inconveniences everyone, but in a really funny way. Oh uh, yeah, I, I'm 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 kind of similar. Uh, I wouldn't say I point out things I forget, but I I constantly like do slash say things that make the GM's life more difficult. Oh, I. <laughs> I just I, I tend to make everyone's life more difficult, but I like in a way that's really funny because I, I it's not like I'm playing favorites. I do it to myself too. Yeah. And I don't like rules lawyer, but there've been a couple points where like someone says I do something and I, I check my I check and I'm like wait a minute because <laughs> the 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 druid has in her backstory that she's terrified of undead creatures. Yeah. And we were fighting this undead creature. And so the druid wanted to run up and heal people, and the GM said that she could, but then I was like, wait a minute, doesn't the fear effect prevent you from moving towards the thing you're afraid of? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, and the look that she gave me. Why? <laughs> I, I think well, she was about to bite me. <laughs> be, because I'm a, I'm like an illusionist is sort of the main skills I've gone for. It just, be, the illusions just create a whole host of issues for the, for the GM. Because they've, they've got to actually think about what they'll allow to happen in their world um, and and how it affects people around them. So it's it's creating a whole host of additional issues. Yeah. And um, there was another point where the GM had to actively stop me from getting myself killed by pointing out a fucking rule contradiction. <laughs> where I, I was that committed to being like, wait a minute. <laughs> the GM was... <laughs> So basically, an enemy hit us with a fireball, like an, a magical fireball, yeah. that was super powerful, and I failed my my deck save, and so it just completely fucking blasted me because I'm a gnome wizard, so I don't have a, a lot of hit points to go around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it completely blasted me, and a little bit later we were talking about how like, man, he completely took a lot of us out. And the, and someone asked, "Can he? Can you get an instant kill?" And Jim was like, "I think, I think you can only get an instant kill if it does like double your max HP." And it did. And I, and I look at my character sheet and I'm like, "Wait a minute!" And he <laughs> he hears me and he looks directly at me and he says, "Don't do the math. Don't do the math. You're fine. Don't do the math." <laughs> <laughs> it's been and gone now. Don't work that out. <laughs> that was very entertaining. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure we'll get into a few situations like that. But yeah, like, what, one of my favorite things that my GM did to me to punish me for being a dick recently is uh, I'm a changeling, which means... Uh, I punish myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, I'm a changeling, which means I can change forms and, like, visually into, into different creatures and s somewhat change races as long as they're, like, humanoid and within my size. Uh, I think my, my medium you're, size. Um, you're transracial. Exactly, but it, it, it means that yeah, I can I can change myself for different scenarios, and basically we'd go into this bar to get information. So because the rest of the group doesn't know I'm a changeling, I snuck off uh, somewhere else and changed into my bar dwelling uh, dwarf, which is one of the uh, characters that I've created for myself. Like basically, it's just a guy that gets on well with people in bars. So because it was that sort of bar, I was like, okay, I'll change into this guy. Um, I'm just on fire constantly at the moment. I'll change into this guy and gets and, and sort of talk some people and he gave me some uh, additional benefits for having um for, for, for sort of blending in uh he gave me like an advantage on one of my rules for blending in and stuff uh but then later on it was looking like a fight was going to break out so i'm like oh shit i need to rejoin the group because they don't know where i am and they don't know that i'm in the bar still so i went to the bathroom and i said okay i'm gonna go to the bathroom and i'm gonna wait until there's no one in here and then i'm gonna change myself uh, back into my regular form and he was like, that's cool, but there might not, like, this is a busy place. You don't know when there's going to be a gap where there's no one in. Roll this D100, and that counts for how many minutes you have to wait. So you were loitering in a public bathroom. I literally had to go into a bathroom stall, and I rolled, I think it was 34. So I had to wait, wait. 34 in-game minutes until I could leave. If it's a stall, why'd you have to wait? Is oh, no, like no, no, noisy? no, it, 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 wasn't, like it, it wasn't a stall, no, you're right, it wasn't a stall, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I literally just had to walk into a bathroom and wait fucking 34 minutes before I could leave, and 
in game, obviously, that was 30, uh, 34, but out of game, it was like a few minutes. But it meant for this entire encounter that was very near, it didn't end up ending in a fight, but it very nearly could have done. And I, they were just like, where the fuck is this guy? And then I finally come back and join them, and they're out in like the beer garden talking to this guy, and turns out they've used charm on a guy um, to, to get some information out of him, and I didn't know. So I come up and I'm like, who the hell's this guy? What's going on? And I almost give away that, the, the, that he's charmed to his mates. <laughs> It was a secret room up there. Probably, yeah. I think uh, I saw a secret room in the last room. I'll have a you want to bother yeah. with it? I suppose it'll just be the muncher, won't it? Yeah. But I mean, um, to, well, well, to well, maybe, well, maybe yeah. take well, a peek. Take but a yeah, peek so it, it meant that I kind of screwed everything up by uh, trying to disguise myself. Because basically, uh, I've read up on changelings quite a lot, and they very, very, very rarely reveal themselves as changelings unless it's people they really trust. And technically, I've only known the people in my campaign in the game for like a week, so I'm not revealing it to them yet. Right, makes sense. Um, but it means that if I actually want to use my changeling abilities um, for good in our campaign, <laughs> it's, it's difficult because I have to do it sneakily. I am... Um... I had something similar to that with uh, my character because a, a few of the party members decided that they were going to go off and, and fuck around with something while uh, other party members were asleep. Yeah. Bad idea. So, <laughs> so the, um, pardon me, the GM, um, they get into a fight that is a witch in the water. And she like comes out and she's like, <laughs> and but she attacks. Yeah. And the rest of the is like, oh shit, there's a witch in the water. Um, maybe we shouldn't have stuck our hands in. Pointed look at the <laughs> barbarian. And uh, we need everyone. We need all hands on deck. But I'm on a boat some ways away. It's a flooded village. Ah oh, shit. Okay. They're on rooftops, right? And I'm on a boat some ways away. So they start calling to get the attention of me and the warlock who are still on the boat. And the GM just asks me to roll a perception check. And I fail, like, two perception checks in a row as they're desperately screaming oh, no. <laughs> for my help. So I'm, like, snoozing on the boat. Like, I act I'm, like, my character wakes up and so on. And... But he just still doesn't get doesn't what's going them. on, yeah. Still doesn't get what's going and on. And eventually they stop... They give up on trying to call me, and the GM still asks me to do a perception check, and I um, <laughs> I, I finally succeed, and he says that no, you don't hear anything, but you have sort of this feeling that there's some bad juju, there's like bad vibes. You yeah. can sense the vibes, and you know you need to get your ass out there now. <laughs> he basically gave you every opportunity to actually help them, otherwise they were gonna die. <laughs> yes. So I come out <laughs> swinging. I fucking cast magic missile, and um. You're caught. Yeah. I cast magic missile, you know, the whole nine yards, the whole wizard shebang. And. <laughs> oh, God, that's, that's a, a lot that's, of spores. <laughs> that's a lot of spores, baby. That's a lot of spores. But. So I get out there, but there's still some distance between me and the. Uh, and the other characters. Because they, yeah. like, waded over. My character can't swim, and he's very short. Like, ah. I wrote on his character sheet that he cannot swim. Which I wrote before I knew that this was a campaign <laughs> all about water. Well, so is it really? Yeah, it's all about, like, water. There's a oh, lake. No. There's, like, flooded areas. It's very <laughs> water-themed. Have you got shape? Has anyone got shape water? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, the druid might, because druids have say, everything. But... You need if the if Nonia campaign has shape water. I've got shape water for my campaign. It's not even a. It's not even really, really. I'm sorry. Dodge roll quickly. You just gave no. up. Gave up. On I, I, I I gave up because I'm punishing you for being a dick. Fucking! I can't fix shit. Do, do you know the? Do you know the I can't fix shit. Do you know the, th the little thing that, do you know, do you know when you, you're in a boss fight and the, the, it gives you a little circle of protection at the end of the fight when there's goop under you? You just need to add that to the start of rooms. Yeah, it's, that would work. It's bullshit, my guy. It's bullshit. Alternatively, alternatively, fuck you. Stop dying on purpose to make me look bad. Yeah. Um, yep. 
but yeah i get out there and um there's no way for me to make it over because i at that point i didn't have like the levitate spell so the uh one of the uh ship's hands elects to throw me Ooh. That's only because so you're small guy... yes so he asks me to pick a number the gm asked me to pick a number and apparently this was going to determine if uh i think i overshot or undershot <laughs> So he rolls, I pick a number between 1 and 20, I think I picked like 14, so he rolls, and it rolls like an 11. Yeah. So he's like, so the guy slightly undershoots, and I smack into the side of one of the houses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, amazing. I love my GM because he does stuff like that that's not strictly in the rules, but it's just fun. Yeah, like, that, that, that's what I liked about this role, that it was like, okay, you have to roll to see how long you have to wait in the bathroom. I thought that was, like, really creative. <laughs> um, the, uh, the GM's done other things, like, our character is charmed by an enemy creature, and, they, like, they're going to attack the nearest ally, but there's two of us at an equal distance. Yeah. So he's like, he picks one of us, and he's like, um... Choose between yourselves. Odds or evens. <laughs> and he rolls a d6 and chooses who the character attacks based on that. And that way it feels like it's our fault when we get stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I like that. Right, we'll end this episode off and we'll continue into the next one if you're down to do another. Hell yeah. Cool. Right, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and join back for the rest of this conversation in the next episode, which might be a year from now. We'll see. Bye.